How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with like itty bitty beer time. Form of Tin Barn Brewing. It is their countryside session IPA. You see that? You see that? 6%. Is that legal? Is that legal? Are you allowed to call an IPA at 6% a session IPA? Are you? Isn't that written in like the Geneva Convention or Magna Carta or something like that that you're not allowed? It has to be like 5%. Uh, you know, someone makes a 5.3, 5.4% beer and they call it session. I'm like, I'll allow it. I'm not happy with that decision, but you're close. Close enough. Six. Six. We're talking about 6%, son. Not, not, not a game. Not real life. We're talking about 6%. Anyway. Um, store cold drink fresh. I bought this from the brewery, so it should have been. Uh, Roman, this is two weeks old. I went on my first beer excursion in practically two years. Brought Keith with me. I made a video about it. You might have watched it. And uh, this is the beer I had at the brewery because it was the lowest ABV beer that they had on. I'll reserve my judgment for the review. We'll see how the sucker aged in the can for those two weeks. It's all right. You know, Tin Barn. It's kind of what they do. Big logo. A little bit of lettering. I'm not going to say I hate it. I'm going to say I love it. I'm just going to say it's not bad. Um, that looks like a hazy, hazy, turbid IPA, which it is. Not a session IPA. It's an IPA. IPAs, 6, 6%. Six you know? You want to go below that, you, it's not just 6, 6% six session, man. I'm getting hung up on that shit. Anyway, excuse me. Index finger, infinite creamy top to it, um, rich, turbid kind of body to it, but doesn't come off like that kind of super dark kind of oxidative residual sugar kind of darkness. It just looks really turbid, turbid for its lower ABV. So it looks like something looks good in the picture. Let's put it that way. Try and get a nose on it. Citrus, sunny D citrus, not overpowering. But there's a big citrus note to it, but the orange comes off more like a Sunny D orange than is real orange. 99% sure that's exactly what I said about the last Tin Barn beer I reviewed. And that's the bulk of it. I, I mean, there's a soft, albeit slightly generic kind of bittering, but nothing too aggressive. I wouldn't say it's overtly sweet or it's not seeming like it's going to be overtly sweet. I think it's going to be a sweet beer, but not too crazy. Keeping that 6% in mind. I just think it's going to be bursting in that orange, but come off a little bit sunny D. Like, at least that's what the nose is telling me. Let's just dive in. Cheers. Mm. I just realized I forgot to turn my little fun light here. So this time my face isn't as dark. Look at that. Everything looks better. Actually, it probably doesn't. I'll buy Mike mad low. I should probably just do that. There you go. Wow, let that light shine, baby. Let that light shine. Exactly what I thought it would be. The bittering's bigger than I thought it would be. There is this nice kind of like hop green, more like hop pellet green. It's not burning, but it's rather aggressive. I think that's a fun thing. I don't think a lot of people play flirt with that line of being big but not aggressive. The orange definitely comes off like Sunny D. Like I don't know their process. I mean, last time I reviewed their beers, I'm like, it just tastes like they add something in their beers. They add like some kind of like, you know, like vitamin powder. Like, I'm not saying that's what they do. This is just me just kind of trying to explain what I'm tasting. So the orange that I get from Tin Barn beers has always been the orange you get from an orange Flintstones vitamin, which is the same kind of additives that they use and a lot of breweries to kind of bring that orange and crank that orange up. Now, some breweries might use it in a very small scale towards just kind of the MSG portion of the beer towards vibrating, vibrating, um, just pumping the vibrance up of a beer. It tastes like it just goes a little bit further. It's vibrant. It's aggressive. It makes this orange pop. Like I said, it goes from like fresh squeezed orange juice with sugar added to just sunny D level orange, even for its ABV. Am I going to be angry at that flavor profile? In general, beer excluded, no. I think that's a, a Sunny D's delicious. I'd drink it if I wouldn't just have fucking sugar coma. Um, but in beer, when you get to that level 
of like that synthetic kind of orange, it just disconnects you from the beer itself. Because then you start to think about it in more of that kind of beer, alcohol pop kind of fruit smoothie kind of beer thing. You know, a lot of these, you know, fruit smoothie beers, even to a certain extent, like, you know, lactose beers or like, you know, pastry stouts. The reason why pastry stouts exist is because when you drink a really well done stout or barley wine that may be old or maybe is barrel aged, you get, what are you getting at? A bit of really beautiful, well aged, barrel aged stout. What do you get? I get notes of vanilla and coconut and chocolate and all that stuff. So that's why those things exist in those adjunct sets. You're like, well, those are the flavors that really well done, well made, barrel aged beers exhibit those flavors. Well, let's just not put them in there. Or let's just go put those things in there so we can duplicate that. And the same thing works on the other end of the spectrum from these kind of hazy IPAs and be like, well, what turns me on when I get this really well done, slightly weedy, kind of big, vibrant orange, kind of citrus leaning kind of beer it really turns me on. But like, how do we make that happen? Maybe through non-brewing means. And I'm not saying they're doing that. This is just me just using this as, as, a, as a stepping off point, as a, as a sounding box for that. It just comes off like there's something added to this. It could be oranges for all I know. It could be they're zesting their beer with orange zest, and it's just like, ah, oh, we just don't tell people we do that, and that's how we get. And that's fine and dandy, because that's the way it comes off a little bit, a little bit zesty. Um, but I would be, I don't understand how they get to this with Core 4, you know? But it's really apparent to me that there's something to it more than just core four ingredients. So big, huge, sunny day vibes, a bitter imp- component. The more I think about it, it comes off like a zestiness. So that could be what they're doing here. The sweetness is there, but not overly sweet. But for 6%, it's rather sweet, but not overly sweet. I don't mind the sweetness on here. And the mouth feels really nice. Is this one of the better session IPAs that I've had? It's like, no, because it's not a session IPA. You cannot... You can't tell me 6% is such an IP. You can't tell me that. You're not allowed to. It's against the law. Like I said, I don't know what it is. It was, what, whether it was those other Geneva Convention, Magna Carta. I don't know which one it was. But you can't do it. So it can't qualify for that. You can't give me a banana and be like, here's your Ferrari. No. <laughs> it's not how it works. I don't care if that analogy is way out in left field. Don't give a shit. Can't do it. So it's not. Is it one of the better lower ebv hazy ipas because that's what it is that i've had as late sure it's in the conversation it's not towards the top but it's fun it's fine a little too synthetic for me but yeah yeah not a bad beer. i'm gonna i'm gonna finish it let's put it that way uh baggage availability on this their prices are high i want to say i paid like 16 to 18 bucks for this no brewery only and leave you with if you like what well, you like this. If you like new school hazy IPA and you like stuff that's relatively low in ABV and you like Sunny Delight, you will like this. So there you go. Review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there, if you want to talk about it, please let me know if you've had this beer and what you think about it. I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Uh, Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massif. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of session IPA right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.